bacon and eggs. You've been smoking, huh? When you can't tell the difference between foaming cleanser and breakfast, your sense of smell's up the creek. Well, at this time of the morning, it should be bacon and eggs. What are you doing? Cleaning, everything, burning up some nervous energy. I've done the lot. The bath, the basin, the shower. I even polished the floor, the floor! Ah! I've never had a broken bone before, not even as a child. Bones are getting brittle. Don't you talk to me, polishing the floor at that hour. I really am sorry. Uh, what were you doing cleaning so early in the morning for? Burning up nervous energy, didn't you say, darling? I can think of several more pleasurable ways of burning up nervous energy. Sorry, I used it all up. Sure. Spoil sure. sport. Excuse me, Matron. Sure, what happened? Frank. Frank, it's all right. I slipped on a highly polished floor and broke my wrist. Sure, that's terrible. There must be something we can do. There is. Put a cast on it. Don't worry, Frank. In a few weeks, she'll be as good as new. Just the way she is is fine with me. You ought to have a muzzle on him, you know that, don't you? Oh, that's slander, isn't it, mate? It's the truth, and I've got the scars to prove it. Well, he must have been missing me. Took it out on you. Oh, charming. Well, you're the vet. You ought to know about things like that. Elementary animal psychology. Hmm, there's a lot of things I don't know, it seems. Well, are you OK? Yeah, just fine. Well, we're grateful, both of us. Say thank you, fatso. Thanks, Vicky. Derek, it's Vicky Dean. No, that's OK. That's why I'm ringing. I won't be needing it after all. No, they've decided to bring in this new man, Jouet, or whatever he calls himself. Yeah, well, as long as it hasn't put you to any trouble. Right, OK. Bye-bye. New man. New veterinary. It's managed to poach two customers so far. I wouldn't mind, but they're both horse studs, and I've spent a lot of time building up people's confidence in me round here. Hey. They're not going to throw you over because somebody else sets up in opposition. You're a good vet. They know you are. He's an equine specialist, Simon. He's trained in Europe. He's probably as smooth as goanna oil and as pricey as hell. If that's what they want, good luck to them. Hey, you just don't give up because of a bit of stiff competition. I mean, you smarten up, sharpen up, be pricier, smoother, oilier. I wouldn't expect you to understand. Oh, I thought we got to understand each other pretty well while I was in hospital. Simon, you're like him. You blew in. You'll take what you want from the valley and leave when it suits you. You don't know how long I'll stay. I want to be the vet here, Simon, here. It's not the world's greatest ambition, but that's all I want. When people say, fetch the veterinary, I want them to be talking about me. If someone gave me a reason to stay, well... You haven't I... even listened. I've listened. I mean, you're all steamed up because somebody took a bit of work away from you. I can't see the big deal. I know you can't. I'll see you soon. Probably. What gets me is the way he didn't even call in and say he was setting up shop. Hang on to this. <clears throat> Ten miles down the road, practically on our front doorstep. So you said... It means we're splitting the district three ways. Our income's down by a third, Vicky. Bang! Just like that. Simon, competition will smarten you up, sharpen you up, remember? Different with doctors. Oh, really? You've got a special right to eat and the rest of us don't? If he can't make a decent living, he'll over-prescribe, over-treat. It happens all the time. Will you? Will Terence? No, we'll just starve. Well, I thought you'd understand. I mean, you've got the same problem, right? I'm not so sure anymore. How do you mean? I had a phone call. Oily's recommended me to somebody. Oily? Vicky, I don't well, think that's Well, super vet, then. Told the Grimsons to get in touch if they needed advice about their Clydesdales. Not in his line. Vicky, you're being given handouts and you're glad? He's not so smart, either. How do you mean? He sent me a sample of vaccine. Turns out it was for equine flu. So? There hasn't been a case of equine flu in Australia since 1911. I bet you looked that up. You'd lose. I'm impressed. So will he be. A chink, Simon. That's all I needed. You're going to put the needle in, eh? Right where it hurts. Well, good luck. Simon, will you be going past the Williams place? Yes. Drop this off, will you? All doctors think they're God, Cheryl. I don't think Terence Elliott thinks he's God, Frank. Simon Flame and Bowen does. Who does he think he is, anyway? He's young, Frank, that's all. Yeah, and too smart for his own good sometimes. Another round, Frank? Yeah, same again for me. Cheryl will have a... Um... Hey, uh... hey, it's nice to see the two of you here together. Again. Same again for Cheryl. Oh, yeah, all right. Vicky will have... I was only saying to Bob Hatfield the other day. What does he see in there? What's it like? Oh, he's got a girl like Cheryl here. Hey, Cheryl, how you going? What you do to your Warwick farm? 
Knocking some cents into him, mate. We'll have some chips and some cashews. Oh, right. And Vicky, Vicky, another drink. Oh, yes, that'd be lovely. Same again for Vicky. Yeah, listen, Molly, I've got to go. I've got Supervet coming round to introduce himself. Yeah, Peter Jouillet. Thick accent. Probably fat and swarmy. Yes, OK, I will. Right, bye-bye. Come in. Yes, can I help you? Oh, uh, I telephoned you this morning. Peter Jouillet, the vet. Yeah, um, yes, of course, C come in. Um, I wasn't expecting you. Yes, I remember, too. The club, hmm? Last night. Yes. Well, it is nice to meet you, Miss Dean. At last. And you. G'day. Hello, Simon. Just closing up for lunch. Oh, good. Where are we going? Well, I don't know about you, but I'm going to Burrigan to a decent restaurant. Well, I could tell you weren't going to birth a cow. Must rush. Well, why uh, Burrigan? What's wrong with the club? Nothing. Eat there if you want. Oh, I know. You've gone off the gemfish Cleopatra. That's it, isn't it? No, that's not it. Well, I wouldn't blame you if you had. So, you're going alone? No. Ah. Anyone I know? No. Come in. Yes, Catherine. So I have found you at last. You? No, not you. Oh, no, that's not fair. Now, come on. So I have found you at last. But I was looking for Vicky. Yes, so was I. Well, how could they do that to us? Well, she was on her way out when I arrived. Any patients turn up? One. Do you know what I said to her, Frank? I said you're being very sensible about Simon. But one day you're going to really fall in love and all your sensible plans are going to just go. That's true, Cheryl. That's what falling in love's like. Now she's gone and done it. Morning. Morning. Sound a bit off. Night sweats, fevers. Listen, that daughter of yours. Yes? I rang her this morning. I wanted to buy her lunch. Is she going? Oh. That's how I felt. No, she's going to watch this new vet do an operation on a horse. I wish I had that kind of pull. But it must mean he's not the monster she thought. Yes, he is. Oh, no, he's not. He's all right. Tall, dark, handsome, foreign. Sounds like Dracula. <sighs> Dr. Bowen, could you step out here for a moment, please? There's a pretty boy there. Yes. Scratch, Bucky. That's the bird you want to look at. I wanted the vet to look at him. Well, she ain't in. How much, darling? Mr. Fletcher, this is a doctor's surgery. Take it out the back, Cheryl. I've got someone on the table. Seems like a perfectly healthy bird to me. How much, darling? <laughs> he asked your mother the same question. Scratch, Bucky? Muzzle it. I'll keep her in isolation until I get the results of the tests back. Her? What did they teach you at medical school, Simon? Didn't they get round to sex? Well, we were too poor. It's a her. Oh, Fletcher's going to miss her. I'm not too sure she's sick. Got to be. Psittacosis for sure. He's probably just got a cold, forgotten to feed himself. You know what old people are like. Talking about sex. Can I take you to dinner tonight? Nope. You're busy? Yep. Uh, tomorrow night? Nope. Uh, busy every night? Yep. You want to talk about it? What? Well, you seem different. I feel different. Distant. Sorry about that. Who's the pretty boy, then? Yeah, sure.
Mr. Fletcher. Sit down. Where's me cocky? Hey, you can get her back in a couple of days. What do you mean, her? Didn't you realise she was a female? Well, I wouldn't have called her Burt Reynolds. Miss Steen doesn't seem to think there's anything wrong with her. Tracked her down, did you? She's running around with that foreign type. Yeah. Looks like a real lounge lizard to me. Uh, Miss Steen's doing some more tests, and your blood test is clear of psittacosis. You're saying I'm OK? I'm saying we've eliminated psittacosis. What have you been doing lately? Doing? Hmm. Spending your days. Fishing. Just fishing. That's what I said. Well, we'll see how our Miss Dean gets on with Bird Reynolds. Debbie. If it's female, Debbie Reynolds. Come in. I'm very pleased with you. Hi. Oh, hi. I got the blood test back. Negative. Whatever your man has, it isn't psittacosis. The bird is perfectly healthy. Please, take it away. They did a complement fixation test? Are you saying I'm incompetent? Yes, they did, Doctor. Oh, it just had to be that. Oh, that's right. Blame the animal. Your patient probably just has alcoholic malnutrition. Psittacosis isn't the only reason for loss of weight, you know. He didn't have the symptoms before he had the bird. After doesn't necessarily mean because. Surely a vet doesn't have to teach you the basics at this stage of your career. Oh, I realise uh, an animal has never been guilty of anything in Guilt? your estimate. Oh, the sick are guilty now, are they? Look, you know what I mean. They carry a lot of diseases. They come in from foreign countries. Oh, like... it's foreigners who are the problem now. I'm doing another blood test on Fletcher. Avine protein precipitate. Is he a pigeon fancier? No. Are you wasting your time, then? Cockatoos aren't pigeon. They aren't even filthy foreigners. Hey, now, listen, it wasn't Simon, me Simon, bought... I've got heaps of work to do. Yeah, and you've got so little time to do it in now. Look, I guess a rival vet isn't going to tell you this, Vicky, so a friend had better. You're running this practice into the ground by never being here and you're disappointing a lot of people. Thank you. Goodbye, cocky. That's a pretty boy, then. Tell that to the vet. Simon, I think it's just a passing infatuation. You reckon? Well, of course it is. These Charles Boyer, George Sanders types, they're just... Tall, dark, handsome, suave, sophisticated, interesting accents. Well, that's all they've got going for them. That's all? Well, I trade all of that in for a kind nature. Hmm. I mean, what's a bloke like that doing here, anyhow? Well, he's a specialist, a horse specialist, with not one, but several big studs in the district. And he's doing something with the Agricultural College and, uh, oh, yes, he patents medicines. Did Vicky tell you all this? Uh, Beverly's cousin works as a strapper out at Yarram and Stud. Vicky tells me nothing anymore. I mean, he's so old. He must be at least 40. Thank you very much. Not you. No, you are more distinguished. Oh, I've had it. Why don't you go home now? Have an early night. <laughs> no. What's the matter? I'm worried about Vicky. Oh. Join the club. I don't suppose it's any of my business. I mean, she doesn't owe me anything. But we were friends, you know what I mean? I know what you mean. She used to talk to me, ask me about things, ring me up and we'd have a bit of a chat. We'd go to the movies or something. It was nothing spectacular, but it was good. Well, I thought it was good. I'd like to have a chat to a shell. Can I come round tonight? I want to talk to it myself tonight, Simon. When you do talk to her, tread softly. Well, how do you mean? Well, Vicky's like most of us. She doesn't like people meddling in her private affairs. Well, I wasn't going to meddle. Neither was I. It sort of turned out that way. Why don't you leave it for a day or two? I'll keep you posted. If you think that's best. Yes, I do. I'm sure it's just a fleeting romance, but with a little unwanted help from us, it could turn into a lasting disaster. You eating? No appetite. <laughs> What's on? Don't ask. Ah. Oh. <laughs> uh, cookie? Scotch, please? Right, Doc. 
Something wrong? No, no, nothing's wrong. Tired? No, not tired. Bored? No. Missing this city, the excitement of a big hospital. Not that. I like the work here. And that operation we did this morning. Now, how often would I get to be in something like that in the city? No, it's not work. But it is something. Yes, I think it is something. Dr. Bowen, I presume? G'day, Clive. Fancy seeing you here. Where else do you come for a quick feed and a bad case of heartburn? Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> oh, Simon. I don't think you met Peter Julian. Peter, Simon Bowen. Dr. Simon Bowen. Uh, Simon is fine. How do you do, Peter? How do you do? Peter's new in the area. Yes. Simon, I think uh, we have a friend in common. Oh? Yes, the uh, veterinary surgeon here in Wandon Valley, uh, Miss Dean. Vicky Dean? I'm sure she has mentioned you. Oh, yes. Victoria and I are old friends. How is she? Ah, uh, she. She's wonderful. I will tell her that we have met. Yeah, please do. And a double scotch, please, Cookie. a boy. All right, nobody panic and everything will be all right. Just take your turn and keep calm. I'll do my best to attend to you one at a time. Mr. Connemoss decided against coming to see you. He would rather wait and see Dr. Elliot because he does not wish to offend him. Does he know I'm starving to death? Oh, and Mrs. McElroy's car won't start, so she'll be in tomorrow. When Dr. Elliot has returned. Mrs. McElroy is your patient. Oh, <clears throat> is she all right? Have you been drinking? Yes, I wiped myself out on one double scotch. Well, what's upset you? He was at the club today with Clive Williams. The Pope? The horse doctor. Oh. I met him. What did you think of him? Charming. Well, did you talk to him, you know, conversation? Yes, he was charming. Yes? He's filthy rich. Well, you can't hold that against him. He wears expensive aftershave lotion. He must sprinkle it on with a watering can. And every time you go to do something, he does it for you. He's always shoving cigarette lighters under your nose. You don't smoke. Well, he gave me a cigar. I couldn't refuse. It would have looked unsophisticated. You mustn't let him get under your skin. I'm not. I just don't like him. Neither do I. I mean, I know it's none of my business, but I just don't know what the hell Vicky sees in him. Right. I mean, apart from the fact that he, he's handsome, charming, filthy rich, sophisticated, successful, he's got absolutely nothing. I'll be in my surgery. Oh, didn't I hear Frank out here again? Yes, he was here for a minute. Well, don't I remember him being the unwelcome suitor? People can change their minds. How about the other Dean? Is she involved in her heady romance? Mr. Turnbull? I mean, uh, she and what's her name? Are they still... Uh... Yes, still. Mr. Turnbull? Hi. Am I interrupting anything? No, I'm just making a sandwich. Do you want one? Mmm, that sounds good. Did you know that George's baby wasn't really George's? Or was it George's and not really what's the names? Oh, green pastures. Yeah, the town's gone mad. You think Charlie and Di was paying us a visit? <laughs> Been doing any night surgery lately? No, I haven't had time. Well, if you ever need a hand, I'm willing and available. Thanks, son. Oh, I enjoyed it the last time. And I thought you might be getting a little bit behind in your work. Oh, why is that? I'm busy with other things. I'm managing. Still seeing uh, Peter, what's his name, eh? Jouet. Yeah, I know how it'd be. Have a lot of things in common with another vet. Yeah, we do. Yes. It must be good to be able to talk over work problems with someone who understands the business. We don't much. Oh. There's a lot more between Peter and me than veterinary matters, Simon. Yes. Peter's just about the best thing that's ever happened to me. Well, he's... Well, he's just the best thing. I think that's good. That's terrific. Well, look, my offer still stands. Any time you need a help, I'm available.
So, and how are the young lovers? Simon, I wish you'd give it a rest about Frank and me. I mean, a joke is a joke. I didn't mean you. I said young lovers. Vicky and a French bloke. Oh, well, if I know the truth, it's all off. Oh, you mean they've split up? Yeah. So Vicky's not too happy at the moment. That means I'm not either. That's probably why I just jumped down your throat. I suppose she must have found out about him then. What? I heard he was married. Oh, well, you know Vicky. She could never put up with anything that wasn't above board. So she did find out about him being married then? Uh, look, it's over and done with. Here, I'll make the coffee. Are you all right? Of course. Why? This isn't Sarah Greenway's car. It's Sally Granger's. Oh, my mistake. Come on, Fatso. Come on, Fatso. You won't get any exercise if I do all the walking. Vicky. Vicky. Breakfast ready. Vicky. Hello, Mum. Oh, there you are. I just looked in your bedroom. I haven't been there all night. After you and Frank left for the benefit, I thought everything over. And you've gone back to Peter, have you? A married man? You know about that. Well, I don't want to know how you know. It doesn't matter. And don't start going on about the disastrous things that can happen to a girl who gets involved with a married man. I don't want to know about them. This is different, and it's between Peter and me. So let's have breakfast, shall we? I'm starving. Spare a moment for an old digger. As long as it doesn't cost me too much. What brings you to this neck of the woods? I just thought I'd pop in. Well, I haven't seen you for a while. That's true. How are you, city boy? Good. How are you? I'm good too. How's Peter? Ah, the nitty gritty. Well, I thought it was all off when you found out he was married. It's my life. The only one I've got. That's what I mean. You're heading for trouble. Oh, in what way? You've worked hard to build up your practice. You've always insisted on certain standards of behaviour. What are people going to say when they find out you're wrong with a married man? I don't care what they say. Vicky? I've met someone I love, and he's the most important thing in my life. I didn't know he was married until it didn't matter. What about his wife? She's in France. And you're here, is that it? Yes, that's it! Oh, Simon, it's not like that at all. Peter's used to a different lifestyle. Well, his wife is more of a business partner. Their marriage is a contract between them. He provides all the good things in life and she looks after the family and, and acts as his hostess. Oh, you don't understand. You're not even listening to me. Yes, I am, Vicky. You're absolutely right. It's, it's your life and no one has any right at all to interfere with it. That's right. Just be happy. Thank you, Simon. Got clients, I'll go. Bye bye. Get out of it, you mongrel. Hello, Nadia. Simon. Simon Bowen? Yes, it has been a while. I was wondering. Apologize. Well, what invitation? Who was the lucky man? Bill? Sorry, I missed it. Still, you've seen my wedding, you've seen them all. Hello? Hello? Hello, Nadia? Thank you, Beverly. Yes, I finished the call. Would you try the other number, please? Hello, Diana? Simon Bowen here. Yes, it's absolutely marvellous to hear your voice again, too. 
Wandon Valley? Wonderful. Horse riding, vineyards. Well, I've always been interested in wines. That's what I was calling about. I wondered if you'd like to come up here for the weekend. You'd have a super time, I can promise you that. Oh, good, that's great. I'm pretty busy right now, Diana. I'll call you back later and finalize all the details. Thank you, bye for now. Well, why not? Birds do it, vets do it. Just get that sitting number, please, Beverly. Yes, it's the same one I called yesterday. I'm sure all the lines can't be busy at this time of the day. No, 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 I wasn't doubting your word, Beverly. Could you try the number again, please? If Vicky is moving to a flat, then it's her business. All right, give me the number if it makes you feel happy. Nine, three, four. Now, about my number, Beverly, is it? Thank you, Beverly. Hello, Diana. Just calling back to organize the weekend. But I've made all the arrangements. You promised, Diana. You can't wheel, wheel out of it, can you? Well, I'm not particularly concerned about your principles. Say, Levy, I suppose. You wouldn't happen to know any girls who'd be able to make it, would you? No, I don't suppose you would. Yes, I'll keep in touch. Yeah, bye for now. Damn. I'm going to bed now. It's a bit early for you, isn't it, Skye? I can sleep any time I choose, unlike some people. I don't poison my body and give myself insomnia. The body is like any engine. You must ensure it has the correct fuel. You don't put petrol into a diesel engine, do you? Good night. I don't believe it. Pinch me. Make sure I'm not dreaming. <laughs> What's the matter, darling? An early night. We are going to have an early night. <laughs> oh, sleep, what kills the raveled sleeve of care. You idiot. Mm -hmm. Let's lock her in. Let's chain her to the bed. Come on, let's go. <laughs> no, I have to do the washing up first. No, to hell with the washing up. Let's go before something happens. Right. <sighs> don't answer it. Maybe they'll go away. No, don't be silly. Shh. The lights are on. It's probably the goats wanting a dance. Do you want Sky to answer it? You win. Hello, Simon. Hello, Molly. Brendan, I hope I'm not intruding. I'm in need of a friendly shoulder. <sighs> Come on in, mate. I mean, it isn't as though Vicky doesn't know what's what. So you said. I mean, Peter's a very nice person, I'm sure. But he's married. Yeah, that's precisely it. He's married with a wife and kids in France. Vicky shouldn't be involved. Oh, but heart rules head for some people, Simon. Molly, you're a woman. What do you think? What? I mean, as a friend of Vicky's. I mean, I'm a friend. We're all the friends. But she won't listen to me. Do you want me to have a word with her? No, she wouldn't listen. Well, I'd best go home and let you good people get some sleep. Oh, no. Don't you worry about us, Simon. Well, we'll just finish this bottle and then I'll have to go. That's all right, mate. There's no rush. You take your time. I'm really worried about Vicky, you know, Brendan. Not that we've noticed, mate. What's happening? We're all just going to bed. That's what's happening. I don't know why you bother after poisoning yourselves with alcohol. But I suppose you can't expect anything better from a doctor. If you didn't poison yourselves, you wouldn't need organised medicine and its drugs. We believe in prevention rather than cure, young lady. Drugs are only a treatment. Pill pushers, all of you. 
You scorn nature's cures and ridicule those who choose to sustain the body the natural way. <coughs> that is not so. Yeah. Simon cares, Sky. He does not ridicule you or your hair-brained ideas. Hair-brained? Natural medicine has a long and honoured tradition, Molly. Drugs are the mainstay for fools who compound the poisoning of their bodies. Hey, what are you doing here again tonight? Oh, man's got to eat to live. Word is that uh, Beverly's not seeing anyone right now. There's your big chance. <laughs> Beverly, could you imagine that with Beverly? <laughs> Right, if I join you, Doc. Well, now, how's the blood and gut business? OK. Putting your pennies together to buy a house? You should, you know. Rent money is dead money. Not yet, Ben. I could get you a terrific deal. A big new development house and land project. Big blocks, beautiful land. No, Ben. Get you a good price. No, thanks. Well, come and see it anyway. No obligation. I don't want to see it. Here. Just in case you change your mind. For you to try and sell me a house, things must be pretty desperate. Money squeeze. No loans. Thanks for buggers. Oh, really? I'd be in real trouble if it wasn't for the frog. Bought this great big squatter's home, almost National Trust material. Oh, I've had my books for years as a white elephant. Sold it at a bloody good price, too. Good. Frog reckon he got a bargain. Frog? Yeah, Peter Jewlett, you know? Says he's going to turn into a real show place. Is he? Beats me, but Jewlett reckons his wife would know what to do. His wife? Yeah, that's right. She's coming here. In a couple of weeks. Ah, oh, the house has seen better days, but it's still pretty solid, mind you. Still... Hey, where are you going? Come in. Hi. Hello. Oh, it's a good flat. Very practical, like me. Sure. How are you, Simon? Not bad, you? Good, good. What is it? What? What you want to say? Oh, uh, no, I just chat. It sounded urgent on the phone. Yeah, well, I always sound urgent on the telephone. It's nothing. Uh, no, it's not. It's something. It's hard for me to say, though, Vicky. You see, I want you to be happy because I care about you. In a universal sense, I mean, like I care about my work and fatso and some people and some things that have special values to me. I also tend to analyse everything, and this is how I usually screw everything up. But all I wanted to say is I want you to be happy. That's number one priority in my list. Do you understand that? I think so. Right, now, to cut a long story short, I heard that Peter is bringing his wife here to Wandon Valley. Now, I wanted you to know, in case you didn't know, because I didn't want you to get hurt. I know. In a couple of weeks? Yes. You know? I know. You didn't know yesterday? That's true. What are you going to do now? I'm working it out in my mind. Are you? All I know is that I want to be with Peter. When? I mean, two nights a week. Vicky, you don't want to be somebody's mistress. You're beautiful. You have class and style and talent. You're magnificent, you're horny, you're brilliant. You deserve somebody's full time, 24 hours a day, every day of the week. Not some part-time affair, dirty weekend every now and again. You're worth more than that. I mean, Vicky, what in the hell's got into you? Hey, look, I'm sorry. You do what you like with your own life. But please, Vicky, don't do this to yourself. Thank you for saying those nice things, Simon. Yeah, well, I wasn't trying to be nice. The problem is, with love, you can't be selective. It just happens. You have no choice. And sometimes the situation isn't ideal. I know. I know that. But if it really is love, you can't turn your back on it. I agree. You're right. But if it really is love, then it shouldn't be a part-time thing either. I mean, that's what's wrong. Right. Now, there's only one way to handle this. Don't see her for a while. Keep out of her way, go out and have yourself a good time. It's not like that, Terence. Besides, as you're not here permanently, maybe you should uh, cast your net a bit wider. I'm not worried about myself. It's not as if I'm hurt. It's Vicky I'm worried about her. Take the weekend off now and then. Go to Sydney. 
I'm worried because she's doing a very stupid thing and she's going to be in for a lot of pain and misery. Simon, it's not your concern. It is. I mean, what's he got that I haven't got, eh? He's rich. I'm not poor. He's successful. I'm on my way. He's old. I'm young. He's French. And I'm not really in love with her. Good, good. You've got it all pretty well worked out. Yes, of course. No, I haven't. <clears throat> I keep rationalising the whole damn thing, I think. No, I'm sure. I'm hurt because she'd rather have him than me. Oh, I don't know what the hell's going on. I've got this pain in my gut. I'm feeling miserable. I'm afraid I won't be much help, darling. I'm miserable too. Well, that's okay, as long as I'm not on my own. I bought some herbs. How would you like an omelette? I'd love it. I'll make the salad. After dinner, we can watch the movie on TV. Right. Been doing some study. Oh, just browsing. Browsing? Through a medical encyclopedia? M, for menstruation or menopause? Menopause? I was just wondering... You don't have to worry about menopause yet, Shirley. You show none of the classic symptoms. Oh. If I were you, I'd be worried about P for pregnancy. Hello. I've come to apologize. I am I'm possible. What's the matter? Nothing's the matter. Why? You're not responding. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking about that cat. What cat? The one with feline interruption. How interrupted. can you think about the cat when I'm holding you in my arms? I'm sorry. Come to me. Peter, I have something to say. I understand your work is important to you. I accept to be number two priority in your life. I won't see you anymore. What did you say? It's over, you and I. It's a joke. It's no joke. I apologize. What else can I do? Nothing. There must be something, Vicky. I'm a good vet. I've got class and style and talent. And I'm beautiful and I'm brilliant. And I need someone 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Not some casual affair, dirty weekend now and then. I deserve more than that. Vicky, I love you with all my heart. It's not enough. I'm worth more. Yes, you are. And I want to give you so much more. But I can't. Chill up here and go back to the States. I don't want any part of this war. I'll open up a gin joint in New York and put my feet up. Those plans don't include you. What we had in Paris was in another time, in another world. The job he has to do is more important than us. Without you, he's not gonna make it. So go out there and get on that plane. He's looking at you. Oh, I hope you don't mind. I haven't got a washing machine yet. Well, of course I don't mind. How's it going? Fine. Fine. How are you? Not bad. I haven't seen you for a while. I know. How's work? Good. And Terence? I saw Simon. And, and I saw Frank. And we had talk. Um, Mum. What, darling? Well, I hope you don't mind me bringing the washing. Well, of course I don't mind. I told you. And apart from the washing, I, um... Want to have a chat? Oh, good. I want to have a talk to you too, darling. About Peter? Oh, about lots of things. I've, um, I've stopped seeing him. For good. And I feel... Um, I still love him. And 
It's so hard. I had no one to talk to. Tonight? What time? Seven-ish. I can't. Yes, you can. Molly, I hate blind dates. Oh, don't be a spoiled sport. Thanks, but no. Oh, Simon, please. Look, if you don't come, it's going to be a disaster. I have too many girls. Look, it's not a blind date. It's just dinner. You don't even have to talk to her. And it looks better if I have even boys and girls. Please, Simon, as a favour. Hey, listen. A joke's a joke. Why don't you tell me? What? Who is my blind date? I don't know, mate. Honestly, it's all been cooked up by Molly, but I agree with you. I hate the suspense and then the letdown. Letdown? You're not going to tell me, are you, Molly? No. Just promise me one thing. Promise me it's not Beverly. <laughs> uh, because if it's Beverly, I'm not going to laugh and I'm going to be very, very rude and you're both going to be very, very sorry. <laughs> Beverly or that girl from the Ridge, what's her name? Who? Hey, what girl? Well, when I first came here, they took me to a barbecue and introduced me to this farm girl. An Amazon she was, about six foot tall and across. <laughs> she loved me on sight, slapped me on the back, dislodged half my vertebrae and invited me to a sheep killing on the weekend. There she is. Come in. Hello, Simon. Cuppa? That'd be nice. That wasn't too bad, was it? No, it could have been Beverly. Beverly? Well, you know Molly's sixth sense of humour. I just sat there sweating, trying to guess who my blind date would be. Oh, sure. Simon, you were right. I'm always right. About Peter. All the things you said. I'm bruised, but I'll be okay now. Good. If you ever want a shoulder to use, I'm pretty available right now. Thanks for your help, Simon. That's okay. You don't need much of anybody's help, Angel. You're awfully good. It's chiefly your eyes, I think, and the throb you get in your voice when you say things like, thanks for your help, Simon. Look, Angel, you have something I seem to go for, but I know when to step out of the game. There's something more important than pride and personal feelings, your happiness and our country. Casablanca, you're mad, you know that? But nice with it. Hey, how about Simon and Vicky? That was a masterpiece of Machiavellian manipulation. I am a genius. <laughs> well, at least they're friends again. And I take the credit for that. You're right. You're brilliant. I am indeed. Good day, Cheryl. Oh, I thought you were Frank. No. Did you see the Simpson baby? No, I haven't. A little rosebud, Cheryl. Don't you just love babies? Hmm. They're all right in their place. Play some of Esme's pickled onions. Hmm. Haven't been game to try mine yet. You haven't been eating them with a candy bar. Well, of course not. I haven't heard anything so disgusting in my life. You've got to talk to that daughter of yours about Charlene Simpson. Classic example of why you should start your babies young. She's 22. It was like shelling peas. Typical male point of view. It is never like shelling peas for a woman. The point is to start young. Now, you must have had Vicky young. Now, if you had another one... What? what... Just a hypothetical case, sure. Just saw the Simpson baby off home. Isn't she a darling? She'll be more of it, eh, sure? Oh, I've just been round to Vicky's shell. She wasn't there. No, she's over here doing a laundry, collecting some crockery, getting some linen and having dinner. You know, being fully independent. I see. How is she? She's fine, darling. Oh, I saw the French vet in town this morning. He hasn't moved out of the district, Simon, just out of a life. I'll need the beer when they're softened, Shell. Doing dope of beef, are you, Frank? Mm. He's putting beer in it. 
Oh, superb, the way they do it in Belgium. Oh, hi. Oh, yes, please. Uh, leave some for the dough. How's business? Fine. How are you on hay fever? You got it. No, but a patient's owner has. Well, get him to come and see me. Pigs might fly. Doris is pregnant. Uh, no. <laughs> Silly old sow. <laughs> hey, fancy getting pregnant at her age. <laughs> she have to stay off the beer for a while. Yeah. <laughs> How can she do this? I've got a good book on the subject, if you'd care to borrow it. I've already been through the sex education jokes with Mother. Thanks very much, Simon. You know the mechanics, then? She is nearly 50 years old. Well, she's in good health. It's not a first child. And if she hasn't reached a menopause yet, there's no reason why she should The shouldn't... reason why is she's nearly 50. You don't want a young brother or sister? Not 26 years younger. You're so stuck on being an only child. Great motherhood training for you. Everyone will say it's mine. You know what country towns are like. They'll say what a great mother Shirley is, carrying the child for you as well. You know, when Frank started taking Mum out, I thought it was kind of cute. Isn't it nice, Mum having a companion? But this is disgusting. I agree, it's terrible. All those years thinking your mother was a virgin, and now this. <laughs> Oh, you're no help. <laughs> Growth. Yes. Cancer. I didn't say that. But it's possible. It's equally possible that it's a fibroid of some kind. Benign. Lyoma. We'll know soon, Vicky. She'll have to have surgery. Don't understand. Why, Mum? I don't remember her ever being sick. I mean, she doesn't even get colds like other people. I read of the riot act on getting herself pregnant. Oh, why couldn't I just be supportive for once? Look, here's your chance. Your mum's going to need all the support she can get. I don't know. I don't know if I can cope with it myself. Of course you can. You have to. We all have to. What if it is cancer? What if she dies? Oh, Simon, what if my mother dies? It's open. Come in. Hi. How did you know I was her? Thought I'd move home for a bit. I've decided I'm not all that cut out on flatting. I've um, closed the surgery for the day. Simon told me you'd be here. And he also told me that you weren't pregnant. You didn't have to come home on my account, you know. <laughs> Don't be silly. You know me. All my actions are motivated by pure and utter selfishness. It's the most honest statement I've heard you make in years. <laughs> Want some coffee? Water's hot. I'd love one. I'll make it. Right. Might as well make yourself useful now you're here. You receiving visitors? Terence, come in. Nothing's gone wrong with the arrangements, has there? Uh, this is purely social, and I brought one of my specials. Oh, good. Hello, we were Becky. just about to leap into the cheap scotch. <laughs> Have you had dinner? Uh, yes, thanks. Yes, I had a snack at the club before I came, and I'm not staying long. Well, if the operation was tomorrow, we wouldn't let you, Doctor. But as it's not... Nevertheless, I think it'd be a good idea if you knock, to get knock. an early night. Oh. <laughs> Door's open. Oh, Simon. I only dropped by for a minute. And a little something. Oh, French perfume. Thank you, darling. Look, it's only cologne, citrus-based, but it beats that hospital smell every time. Come on in. <laughs> Hello. Oh, I should have brought another bottle. Oh, this is lovely. Vicky and I were twiddling our thumbs. Well, I'm glad you could help. Well, thanks. I mean, it's the last person. And I we thought you'd be needing some company. We're not going to stay very late, surely. We didn't think you'd be having guests. Thanks for coming, yeah, Terence. It's just what Mum needed. Oh, that's good. What about you, though? Well, I can't sleep much at the moment, anyway. You better settle, then. Yeah. Terence? Simon? I've got someone to take my place while I'm away. Molly will be delighted to help out in the clinic.
That's great. Terrific, Molly. I've had experience. <laughs> Good thinking, Shirley. Thanks, Molly. Mum, you know what happened when she worked for me. But that was animals. She'll do this on her ear. That's what I'm afraid of. Frank! What's going on, Cheryl? Looks like a party. Well, it wasn't, but it is now. <laughs> Put on some music, darling. Oh, no, Shirley, we didn't... Look, no, no, wait a minute. Now, we should just... Hear. Listen, everybody. This is my operation. And it's my party. So enjoy yourselves, because I'm going to. What do you say, Frank? How about a dance, Joe? Good idea. Good idea. Let's get the same away. It's hard to watch that, sir. I'll put that up there. <clears throat> Now, let's see, I go this way. No, you go this way. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> what sort of voice is this? Terrence. That's slow. That's good. This is a cake this is. Which part? He was desperate to come in with me, but I couldn't take all that fuss. Well, welcome. Delighted to be here. Now then, shall we? be taking so long. Well? Terence, is she all right? It was a large tumour. It was larger than I expected. I'm sending a section to Burrigan. Until I get the results back, I can only make an educated, unofficial observation. But as far as I could tell, the tumour was benign. Are you sure? Now, Frank, that's why I stress that this is unofficial, because I can't be absolutely sure until I get the pathology results. But you're reasonably sure? I'm reasonably sure, yes. In fact, I'm reasonably positive. <laughs> what say we all go down to the club tonight and celebrate? <laughs> I'll drink to that. <laughs> you know, when you think about it, it had to be benign. I don't think any of us could really imagine a world without Shirley Dean. And I'll second that. Oh, I just spoke to Molly. The whole of Wandon Valley's dying to find out what happened to Shirley Dean. The clinic phone's been running hot all day. Oh, I, I don't know. We shouldn't really make an announcement just yet. Oh, come on, Terence. Come on, surgeon. Drop thy mask for once. Well... You don't have any doubts, do you? No. As far as I'm concerned, the pathology report will just be confirmation. Right. Beverly, Beverly, it's Brendan Jones here. I was wondering if you'd do me a very important favour. Would you please advise Wandon Valley that Shirley Dean is going to be okay?